Now, we never hear the end about the migrant caravans that are coming to the United States to flee violence in South America. But you know what we don't hear about? We don't hear the medical migrants from the U.S. that are going down into Mexico to get health services they can't get in the United States. One checkpoint in Yuma, Arizona confirms up to 6,000 Americans a day cross the border entering into Las Algodones seeking health care that they can't find in the United States. 6,000 people a day from one checkpoint. Now, why are they going to Mexico? For dental care. That's right. Essentially, Americans are going to what is a uh, it, it's arguable the actual status of Mexico, but say the third world country, going to a third world country to get medical services that they cannot get at home. And those are dental services. That's right. The state of uh, dental surgery, even uh, more costly procedures, not the general everyday thing like cleanings, fillings, the usual maintenance stuff, but things that require more effort, things that are uh, akin to surgery, things that are a bit more difficult, like um, root canals, you know, more uh, complex procedures. The United people in the U.S. are going to Mexico in order to get it. Now, this area, this city in Mexico, has more dentists per capita than any country in the world because of the demand that's coming from Americans crossing the border seeking their services. In fact, the whole community's economy is designed to take in these dental refugees. That's right, there's an entire town or city in Mexico whose entire economy centers around Americans trying to get affordable dental care. Think about that. Most of them are seniors from Canada and the U.S., seeking major dental care they cannot afford in their own countries, even with insurance. That's right. Even in Canada, now, despite the fact that we do have a universal health care system, dental is not covered. That is still all yours out of pocket or all yours coming out of insurance. And those, uh, those can be quite expensive. For example, I was told that I needed a crown on one of my teeth that had a root canal that crown was going to cost $1,000. So let that give you some kind of a, an idea about you know, how expensive these things are, at least in Canada. They don't have the statistics for how it is in the U.S., but it seems to be beyond the affordability of the average American. And in fact, statistics show that if you take all the Americans that don't have health coverage in the United States, like regular health care coverage, double that, and you've got the amount of people who don't have dental coverage. So think about that. That's about 74 million people in the U.S. have no dental insurance, according to the National Association of Dental Plans. Now, what really is the problem here? A lot of people attribute the problem, and rightfully so, to dental insurance companies. Okay, so what's, what's the big deal? So you go and get dental insurance, like the same way that you would get health insurance, except it's really not the same thing at all. In fact... Dental insurance in the United States covers regular checkups, cleanings, x-rays, and fillings. But not anything that has to be done beyond that. In other words, if you need real care for a problem that has come up, you're paying out of pocket. Or you've got things like uh, procedures like crowns, roots, canals, or implants. In other words, when a problem actually arises. These other things, checkups, cleanings, you know, x-rays, and fillings, these are, these are regular you know, this is regular maintenance that you go through all the time. But when actual problems come up, the insurance company isn't there. Well, I mean, yeah, imagine that. An insurance company is cheap. But think about this. That's their policy. It's not like other insurance companies where they do anything to get out of having to pay for something. This was never covered to begin with. Now, imagine you had auto insurance. And the auto insurance only covered oil changes or regular maintenance, but not accidents. And not only that, but it was written so that it does not cover accidents. Like, you know, going in, they don't cover accidents. What kind of insurance would that even be? I mean, think about a health insurance plan that actually doesn't cover emergencies 
or serious health issues. I mean, without the prerequisite of trying to weasel their way out of them. But imagine they never did to begin with. Would you pay that? Well, a lot of people wouldn't, but uh, a lot of people do seem to do want to pay for the regular maintenance inside of the United States. Now, what's the biggest problem with the dental industry and insurance? Well, according to a Dr. M who spoke to CBS News, the problem is essentially bureaucracy. The number one most complicated aspect of running a dental office, bar none, is dealing with dental insurance. You wouldn't believe how long it takes to get through to a rep to make sure the patient does have benefits. Calculate a copay. So, I mean, really, it's the bureaucracy of a private insurance company that is the problem. Trying to get through to even to speak to someone to see if they even have coverage. I mean, I could sit here all day and make the argument about a universal health care that included dental plans. I mean, I could, but, you know, preach into the choir. You know, you, you don't really need to hear that. But here's something I find very, very interesting. Even the biggest scare tactics by the right, by Fox News, by Trump, that say 20 to 60,000 people per month illegally cross into the United States, uh, the migrants. Now compare that to the number of medical migrants that go to Mexico is five times higher. That's about, you know, what was it? it's a couple thousand people a day. So it's, it's about five times more people going to Mexico to get services that they can't afford in the United States. Well, what about those migrants? Are they, are they considered a plague too? So think about this. The United States is the richest country in the world, but yet there are third world countries who have better health coverage than the United States and third world countries that have better dental coverage than the United States. Think about this. Essentially, Americans are leaving the U.S. to go to a poor country to get a service that they cannot get in the richest country in the world. I mean, we speak of contradiction in capitalism. I mean, that's a perfect example. Despite all this wealth, there is still a very, a very, a very real social need for services that, frankly, are essential. And if anybody tells you dental, uh, dental coverage is not essential, it clearly has never had a cavity or never had anything happen to them in their entire life with regards to their teeth or has never had to pay out of pocket for something. So, so, so let's get this straight. We got the migrants, medical migrants, going to the United States to get coverage for things they can't get in the U.S. And that's okay. Five times higher than the number of migrants that are trying to come into the United States to get away from grinding poverty and frequently violence. Poverty and violence that's caused by U.S. foreign policy to begin with. So before we start, you know, pointing fingers at people trying to get away trying to get into the United States to get away from poverty and violence. Think about the amount of Americans who are trying to get out of the country to go to a third world country to get medical coverage that they can't get in their own, which is the richest country in the world. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.